Hello everyone and welcome to National Numeracy Day. My name is Andrew Jeffrey. I am an author and a maths consultant for schools um, and the sort of things I write are books for uh, children, uh, books for teachers, you've probably seen this one more famously, and uh, books for everyone who just wants to get, uh, get more into their mathematics. So I was delighted to be invited to uh, talk to you on this wonderful National Numeracy Day. Because numbers are all around us, they're part of our daily life. Here's the uh, biggest number in my house, this famous uh, footballer uh, and his famous shirt. But actually, there's a lot more than that. And I want to share with you just uh, some of my ideas for bringing maths alive uh, in the home. Grow their numbers. Good advice, but easier said than done, you know. Um, I think a lot of us uh, are trying hard in these days to educate our children and help them grow. But I, I just would like you to think about the phrase homeschooling. I'm not sure it's a very helpful phrase. I think home and school are and and should be very separate places. Um, so uh, with that said, please don't feel the pressure to make homes like many schools just with kitchen tables. I think children can still learn a lot at home, uh, but it isn't school and we should really make that distinction, I think. Right, having said that, let's get on with our five top tips. So tip one, do a skills audit. Now, what I mean by that is this, um, some of us are teachers, some of us are parents, maybe some of us are children, and I think all of us can benefit from taking stock of where we are. So if you are a parent, for example, um, how, do you, how confident are you about your maths skills? One of the purposes of National Numeracy Day is to help everybody, not, not, not specifically to teachers in schools, to just everybody to just take stock of where they are um, with their own mathematics and their own day-to-day -day life, because our level of mathematics can have a huge impact, particularly our confidence, on our day-to-day -day life and experience. Uh, one of the ways that you can do that, that uh, you may be interested to know, is take the National Numeracy Challenge. I had a crack at it, it's great fun. Uh, you can find it just here. And uh, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward to access and do, and, and it'll, it'll ask you a few questions, um, and it'll give you help on the things that you want help on. And it's a nice kind of way to take stock of, oh yeah, this is where I am at the moment. Um, I can thoroughly, thoroughly recommend that. The link will also be in the um, below in the comments section below this video as well. But also, you might be a um, teacher, and uh, budgets have been tight in schools over recent years. So, I wonder whether your professional development and maths uh, needs some care and attention. Um, I it's one of the things I do as part of my job is professional development in individual schools and, and trusts and so on. Um, and, and the good news is that most people, um, are, I think most publishers and most providers are getting around to this idea that professional development needs to be tailored, it needs to be online as much as anything else, uh, or face to face, but obviously things are changing. So to take this, take time to, to assess your mathematical abilities, why not take the National Numeracy Challenge yourself? And there you go, tip one. Oh, hello again. Tip two, count and estimate. Um, take advantage of the everyday occurrences in your house and the things around you. How many cornflakes might be in a bowl? Uh, what volume, how many milliliters of, of coffee might be in my cup? What's the volume of this cardboard box? What is the surface area of the table, the, what, is the, what are the dimensions of the television? And the best way to make this um, interactive is to make it a game, so go for an estimate first. What do you think? Write down what you think. And it's amazing how estimation improves over time really quickly. So if you start by making a really wild estimate and then you realize it's wrong, it's, it's funny how quickly your skill improves at estimating. So once you count the number of cornflakes in a bowl and you, you say there's 100 and it turns out there's 250, next time you have a go, you'll be much more accurate. 
once you start realizing that a, a mug of coffee contains about 300 milliliters, you'll, you'll be more accurate. Once you realize what a meter is or that a, a door is exactly two meters high, give or take, not very much, you start to get a real sense of the size of the numbers around you. So why don't you give it a go? Estimate and count. It can be quantities, it can be measurements, it can be anything really. Make it fun and see how much better your estimates get over time. You'll be amazed. Um, and it's, a, it's an easy thing to make into a game uh, and it's an easy quick win. So go for it. Estimate and count. And that's tip two. Oh, hello. Ready for tip three then. So I've just been flicking through some uh, cookbooks and you know what? Cooking is absolutely perfect as an opportunity to get your children involved in maths that matters. I mean, you don't want to put too much spice in this. You definitely don't want to put too much fat in this. So when we're cooking, most recipe books seem to assume that the, there are always four people going to eat it. It seems to be a kind of a, a standard. But, you know, not every family has four people. Or maybe you've got uh, three of you or two of you or five of you or someone's not hungry or somebody fancies something else. So those recipes need to be edited. And it's those those proportions, those ratios, those amounts that give us a hugely brilliant opportunity um, for doing some real world maths with our children. Uh, let's take scales. You know, how much do you measure in here? How about capacity scales for liquids? Weighing scales? You have such brilliant opportunity to think about all the mathematics you use, like uh, temperature, uh, time. We've all cooked things at the wrong temperature or for the wrong time, I suspect. Um, let's not go there. Uh, but it's important. Mass. Okay. Uh, so all of these things are really easy to build into your daily routine because they're already part of your daily routine so just by attending to the mathematics involved you'll make your children appreciate actually learning maths is a kind of important thing um, and that's that's really worth doing so next time you uh, cook a meal and you're looking at a recipe just say you know what I think we need 20% less flour could you work that out for me it really isn't difficult it's fun it's engaging and let's face it, it's a real world skill. So there you go, tip three, cook. You know, um, all of us need to buy things and whether we shop using these um, or, or these, or let's face it, increasingly these even, um, we're all gonna have to buy and sell and use money in whatever form. Now, shopping is a great opportunity, obviously, to have conversations with your children. Um, so very briefly, I'm just going to list out tip four, which is about shopping. So, for example, um, which deal is the best value out of these on offer? Um, I bought a camera recently and very similar offers were online. And it took me a long time to pick the one that I felt was the best value. Talking of online shopping, of course, we're all doing more of that either by choice or necessity, um, how do you rate the ratings system? Um, do you look specifically? I'm, I, for one, am very swayed by ratings, but I know that some companies, some manufacturers, offer prizes for five-star ratings. So how trustworthy are they? So there's, a, there's a, a good conversation to be had around the statistics. And what if something has quite a lot of bad ratings but thousands of good ones so there are conversations to be had around ratings uh, what else multi-buy multi-buy savings are they always as good as they seem um, or will the thing you're buying go off or take up valuable storage space that's worth more to you than the money you saved all these things are we don't talk about them enough in uh, mathematics often. Um, what about price comparisons? Did you ever do price comparisons? There are whole websites uh, now that you can look at price comparisons. Um, one of the things you could look about is uh, shrinkflation. If you don't know that word, have a look. Um, so the price stays the same, but the quantity goes down uh, to, for companies to avoid looking like their prices have gone up. So there's some really good maths to be to be talked about there. 
value for money of differing sizes of the same product. Is it always cheaper to buy the bigger one? Surprisingly, the answer is no. Um, if your children are learning about percentages, there's so much here. Percentage discount, if, it, if it's 50% off and then it goes up 50%, is it the same price? No, no, why not? Um, VAT, what is VAT? Is VAT a fifth of the total price? No, it's a sixth. Why, if VAT is 20%, have a conversation around that. Um, delivery charges, you know, is uh, how much is free delivery worth to you and that kind of thing. So if you pay um, a service, an online service, for example, a, a monthly premium for free delivery, are you saving or losing from that? Can you can you do an estimate? So there you go. There's just a great big list of so many different conversations you can have around shopping. So always include your children in those conversations and you'll be doing them a great favour. For our fifth and final tip, I've saved perhaps the most fun uh, to last um, because almost everyone will have some sort of playing cards in their house. Maybe it's a set of Uno cards uh, or just a normal pack of cards. Um, I like trying little fancy moves like this. Let's try this one. There we go. Always cut the cards, never trust the magician. Uh, there you go. Now, this is a pack of cards. You can do all sorts of things. Teachers um, familiar with the CPA idea. Just, I wonder if you've ever thought about this. Look, a, a playing card is something physical that can be picked up and manipulated. Um, pictorial, as in, um, oh, there's one flying off the back. Oh, there's another one. It's just flying out the back at me. What's going on? Okay, pictorial is, uh, you've got a picture, you've got an image, there we go. So there's a five, like a dice five. Um, an abstract, of course, you've got the, uh, the numerals in the corner. So in terms of CPA, you can't get much better than a pack of cards. Um, if you don't have a pack of cards, maybe you've got uh, something else. So you can probably all guess what's in here, and you'd be wrong. It's <laughs> dice. Sorry, okay. And even if you don't have dice, um, I found um, just going on to where you, wherever, where you get your apps, I found loads and loads of dice uh, apps, many of them free. Um, so you can even simulate the rolling of dice. I'll share one really nice dice game with you that I really like. Um, it's got a slightly rude name in some countries, so I'm not going to tell you the name, but uh, you, it's just about accumulating a big score. So you might be this one, I might be this one, and you roll the dice, and uh, I'm going to roll and get as big a total score as I can. So I'll roll first, uh, or two, or six, that's eight, or four, that's twelve. Another five, that's 17. I'm going to stop and bank that. Because if I got a one, I'd go down to zero. Okay, Unless I've banked, in which case I always keep anything that I've banked. And then it's my partner's go. It's a really simple game, but you'd be amazed how much mathematics you can get from it. Lots of good fun mental calculations. Um, also, those of you who have higher level mathematical children um, who understand levels of probability and frequency tables and that sort of level of maths, they can work out the best strategy. There is actually a number at which you should stop uh, each turn, and there is a, an optimum number of rolls to give you the best chance. That's you know that's something that an A-level student could have fun trying to work out, and yet something that a six-year-old can play. So a really really versatile tool. So cards, dominoes, dice, dig out your Monopoly, whatever you've got. Um, they really do make a difference and make maths just the enjoyable thing that it can be.